What's up everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of BS for Build. This is the Evora finale episode. It feels so good to be able to say that. We're driving in the Evora right now, just cruising down I-5. It is 8.45 in the morning right now, which means I went to bed two and a half hours ago. <laughs> we had a lot of stuff to do yesterday to button up the car. Things like headlights, the under tray, wheel wells, some other stuff. And uh, Adrian, I took the day off work. Somehow things just didn't get done in time. Things went on and on. And then Jeff came out into town, came to join us. We're like, oh, let's go to the bar. Let's have some fun. Fun led into more fun. Before we knew it, we were closest down the bar, 2.30. Adrian met a friend, we had a good time, but then the next time I turned around, I was like, all right, the under tray's installed. They're like, okay, it's 4 a.m. It's like, what? So, um, big, big shout out, big thanks to them for sticking it out for so long with me. So we went home real quick, bed for two hours. Now we are on our way to meet some friends and some viewers at Cars and Coffee and show off this car. Stay tuned. everybody we are back from cars and coffee that was really fun uh, meeting all you guys seeing a lot of you guys for the second time thanks for coming out it was rainy the weather was bad but uh, it was pretty cool it was really it was a fun time um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the car the first time I learned about what the Lotus Evora was was uh, a very common way it was Jeremy Clarkson on an episode of Top Gear he's drifting around throws it off the track on purpose he's in the grass and he's driving around and just like giggling to himself about how good suspension is and how much he enjoys the car I couldn't agree more. The suspension on this car for me is perfect. It's got a little bit of a bump to it. You can feel the road, but it is not too stiff and it's not too soft. So it's really, really good. Um, anyways, it's been in contention whether or not this car is a supercar. Jeremy Clarkson calls it a supercar. Therefore, I am calling it a supercar. My budget supercar. Um, the story of how I got this car is pretty fun. Adrian and I were at a company lunch. So we're at this table, um, this booth, we're cram packed with a bunch of uh, work coworkers. And uh, I don't know if you guys know, but you know, normally company lunch, company's footing the bill. So beer is kind of flowing well. Um, we were having a good time, let's say. And, uh, <laughs> and the auction starts. So I'm on my cell phone, you know, acting like I'm paying attention to the lunch and I'm bidding on my cell phone. It, uh, it started at uh, $10,000. And I noticed real quickly that nobody else was bidding. Uh, so I got very excited and I thought as soon as I beat this reserve, um, then the car would be mine. So I, uh, <laughs> we're just sitting in the booth and I'm like, Adrian, watch this. Boop, 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 boop. Bid it up and up and up and up. And at uh, $12,500, I won the auction with these 13,200 bucks is how much I paid for this car. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of how the car looked uh, right now. Adrian and I walk out to the yard and we're looking at this car. It's got a biohazard warning. It's covered in mold. It, uh, almost every body panel had serious damage. Adrian was looking at it like, there's no way this car is salvageable. But I had a feeling with the fiberglass construction of the body, it was gonna give us an opportunity to, uh, to really do it on the cheap. And uh, so I, I picked up the car and I was really happy about that decision. Uh, we have, we unveiled the car on the YouTube channel way before we were going to uh, to work on it because I was just too excited and it was also parked out front of the shop and I couldn't really hide it very well. Um, one really thing uh, interesting thing about this build was the comments that I got when I picked it up and uh, I don't care about all the haters you know hating um, it, it, that that is fine. What it should be I think is a little bit of a lesson to other people watching is if you have faith in yourself. Don't let other people tell you what to do and what you can't do. Just try. As long as you're being like a little bit financially responsible, you know, if this the whole thing went tits up, it would be a really, really bad year for me, but I'd work hard next year, I'd be back okay, you know what I mean? But um, 
don't let other people tell you what you can't do. Because if, if, if I were to have read those comments and ingested those comments, I would have looked at that and been like about 90% of the people think I'm in over my head, it's never gonna work, blah, blah, blah. Adrian didn't think it was possible. Lots of people didn't think it was possible to even get close and stay anywhere like within a budget and all this other stuff. I'm happy to say that that was not the case and we're sitting here today and that's proof of that. So a little bit of a uh, morale speech or whatever, motivational speech right there. Don't let other people tell you what you can't do. If you're comfortable trying to do it, just try it. Because if you don't try, you know, it's not gonna work out. So I mentioned that we stayed on budget. This car, like I said, um, we did, so the challenge for this car was, it has a V6 motor from a Toyota Camry. It's a little bit souped up. It's a great motor for this car. Gonna get off topic of price real quick, talk about the motor. It's 300 horsepower, very, very calm, collected, fun 300 horsepower though. It's like I can cruise through these city streets nicely, no worries. Then when I wanna get on it like this, like it opens up, a little bit of a burnout there when I hit a manhole. I mean, it, it just goes and it's great. So I'm, I'm super happy with this motor and the choice of motor that they put in this car. Not too much horsepower, not your unreliable, you know, with like what we've learned from the Super and other stuff like that, like a good Toyota motor and a car can go a long way. So very happy with that. Um, I don't know how I got off the subject onto that, but we we're talking about price. Oh, we set the price for the car based on another car that shares the price. Can you build a supercar for the price of a Toyota Camry? Um, the baseline model, the cheapest Toyota Camry is $21,000. We went over that budget line. The V6 that shares the motor with this car, Camry, is $31,000. So can we build this car, could we rebuild this car for $31,000? Super happy to say that we not only did that, but we did it under budget. So let me go through some of the numbers. Now, I got some parts cheaply and other people could get parts cheaply as well. I feel like if you shopped around and bought used parts because of our filming schedule and how tight things are, I wasn't able to get good deals on parts except through sponsors. And to keep some of those parts prices private, I'm just gonna kind of categorize some things and uh, lump them together. But this is the honest to goodness truth of what I got these parts for. And not only that, I believe that other people could do it the same way. Um, to get the car back to stock, we had to buy things like new side panels, roof panel, windscreen, uh, quite a few panels, a lot of glass, lots of glass, uh, rear hatch, rear hatch glass, a bunch of stuff like that. Um, $10,842 was what all that cost. Now I wanted to go with an aftermarket front bumper. I really enjoy the look of the aftermarket front bumper. I like the wing that I have on this car. I really like that too, it gives it a nice aggressive look. So I went with a couple extra mods from a sponsor of this build, Hethel Sport. Let me jump back. Stock parts, most of those came from a sponsor, British Racing Group. Aftermarket parts um, that are not uh, genuine, well anyways, aftermarket parts came from Hethel Sport. The aftermarket parts that we did, those plus the wheels and tire set was, let me find the number real quick, $3,250. So that was like my little personal touches on the car that I, I really enjoy. Total cost of the car was $27,292. The total price of the Camry is $31,370. So we got under budget by $4,000. So, you know, any wiggle room there, if you're saying, oh, you didn't count this, you didn't count that. I mean, we're really, really, really far under budget. So we did do it, we did. We were able to build the Evora for the price of a Camry. Overall, how this car is performing or, or my review of it, do a quick little breakdown. I love the interior of this car. It's, uh, I like the, the controls are, Easily understood, easily accessed, everything's dead simple. I really like it that way. Except for the big piece of tech right in the middle is the in-car, the, the dash, the stereo, whatever you want to call it. Jeremy Clarkson said he hated it because the navigation didn't work very well for him. Maybe it's because he's 100 years old. This thing is perfect, fast, responsive, super nice. It's one of those ones where you just hop in, it syncs up with your phone, starts playing your music, you're good to go. I love that in a car. Other than that though, the interior, the thing that stands out the most is how quiet it is. So we're cruising around now at 30 miles an hour. You can barely hear any outside noise. Road noise is really dead and down. These doors and this windows, the way they shut, the engineering behind them, I don't know what it is, magical. Keeps the sound out really, really nicely. And it's a mid-engine car, so there's a whole engine behind me. It's not too loud. You could talk to a friend, casual conversation. It would be no different than any other car. That's pretty amazing for a mid-engine sports car. Um, other than that, I obviously love the looks. I 
I like that we went with 20s on the front as far as the wheel and tire combo. It is possible. I don't have any rubbing, but it looks like you would, which is exactly kind of what the look I go for. Um, that's great. I, I already talked about the engine. I love the horsepower number that it's at. I like how it is. Now this is an automatic, but I get stuck in traffic for hours a day. I drive thousands of miles. I drive I drive a lot. I drive a lot between my work and the shop and home and everywhere else. And I get stuck in traffic a lot. So this being an automatic does not kill me, but the way that the automatic transmission works is brilliant. So we're going automatic mode. It's probably like, okay, so then you just hit the switch and then flip it up and now you're in the paddle shifting mode and it drops gears fast the way you would want. Like I say, drop down into first, second, third. So we, we got this like, I could just jump onto the paddles, work the paddles, and then I just hit D again and I'm backing off into drive and I don't have to worry about it. Unlike some other cars that have paddle shifting, this paddle shifting I think is really intelligent. It will, um, when you brake really hard, it'll downshift for you and bring, that, bring those RPMs down and use the engine a little bit for drag, all sorts of great stuff. It feels responsive and fast like what you would want in an automatic transmission if you're gonna try and use it as a sports car. This isn't gonna be some like track day car for me. I have a lot of other cars to do that, but it is cool to know that I got 300 horsepower in a relatively light car and that if I wanna have some fun on the highway, I'm not gonna be left in the dust. The only things left to do on this car are pretty simple. We, we needed to do the black vinyl on the sides. Got a little bit too late last night, clearly, to do that, so we didn't get that done. The rear view camera, we're just gonna upgrade the camera. The concept is there. It's a really, really solid idea, and it's working really well already, but I, I can't wait. After I upgrade the camera, it's gonna work even better. And the side mirrors work really great, but we never adjusted them, so I can't see through them. Other than that, though, all the little mods that we did and the little tricks that we did, they seem to have worked really great. I'm really happy about that. All right, we are back at the spot where I parked the plan A when we finished that review. Um, who do I need to say thank you to? You can tell like last time I was all like, in the last review I was like, all like, oh, this is a serious thing. And now it's just like, how much fun is this? I love what we're doing. I love where the channel's going. This is so much fun. I'm having a good time. And just knowing that there's so many more cars to come, but more importantly that I get to drive this thing every day is so great. I want to thank all the sponsors. So the biggest sponsors on this build are Hethel Sport. Head over, I will put a link in the description. British Racing Group, Lotus Garage, all top-notch people. There's one quick thing I want to, I, I, I dragged on a little bit in this review, but I want to talk about is this community, uh, be it Lotus or just cars in general, you know, there's so many people out there, they saw that, you know, I needed X or I needed Y or I needed Z. People were reaching out to me, emailing, whatever. If you're out there and you're like having a hard time finding friends, just get in the car scene. Do anything to get in the car scene. Friends will immediately show up. I met so many cool people through this build. I made really great relationships and uh, that is worth all the work and all the hours put together. I had a guy ask me today at Cars and Coffee, well, if you build yourself out hourly, how much would it cost to build this car? And my answer was like, I don't know. I've never even thought about it. And I don't really care to because it, those hours are spent building something, but it's a part of something bigger. It's part of meeting people, relationships, friends, um, goals, all that great stuff. And I met a lot of really awesome people through this build already, and there are a lot more to come. So that's super, super awesome. Um, anyways, Hethel Sport, British Racing Group, Lotus Garage. I have to give a big thanks to Lotus. Lotus um, made it a priority to get me some of these parts so my build did not drag on forever. Uh, thank you so much to Lotus. That was pretty cool of you guys um, for making that happen. All right, guys, that's it for the Lotus Evora build. Thank you so much for sticking it in for 46 episodes. Did I just say sticking it in? Staying in, tuned in. Uh, thanks so much for all the support, buying all the merchandise and helping out with BS4 Build. It really helped us with this build and that was a big deal. Thanks to Eric, thanks to Jeff, thanks to Adrian, thanks to Chelsea for all the work and all the help on this car. I absolutely 100% could not have done it without you guys. I think that's about it. I can't wait for the next build. I'm very, very excited. I'll see you guys then. Peace!